There you have it, the closing bell of the New York Stock Exchange. It started out as a rough day for the Dow Jones. Stocks ticked back up and are now down around 350 points, almost a little, little close to that right now, 348 points. Yeah, the S&P 500 and NASDAQ also saw losses, each hovered over 1%. So overall, a lot of red today yeah. in the stock market. We want to bring in Lori Bettinger now. She is the president of Bank Alliance, a network of community banks. She's also the former director of the Troubled Asset Relief Program at the U.S. Treasury Department. She's a regular here on CBS News. So, Lori, tell us what was driving the markets today. You know, as always, a lot going on. You know, we saw great enthusiasm yesterday in the market. You know, it was up. We saw consumer confidence coming back, people feeling good about the short term, the long term, you know, just, I think, continued good moves, news on the job market. And then today, it was as if people stopped and said, wait a minute, is this really good news, you know, mm. combined with, you know, what looked like Again, good news out of the job market this morning. You know, the um, these first-time unemployment claims, you know, were lower than expected. And, you know, they move a lot week to week, but the average was down. Um, we saw this potential revision to GDP upwards. And all of a sudden, I think everyone says, is this good news or is it going to be bad for inflation and then bad for the economy in the long run? I love people questioning whether or not, is it good, is it not good? Absolutely. It, it, we, it's like we can't believe the numbers at times. What is fueling the strong economy? You mentioned that higher GDP growth than economists thought we would see, and then the lower unemployment claims than expected. What's fueling this? Right. You know, I think, again, it's tying a little bit back to those consumer confidence numbers. We, you know, the American consumer are still spending, you know, maybe it's a little bit more on services like vacations and restaurants than some of the, you know, the goods that people were buying earlier. And, you know, in some cases, I think we've heard that, you know, our sa our savings as a country are starting to go down. We might be tapping some of our savings account to buy things, but we're still purchasing. And that's, you know, e and that's making up for other areas of weakness, like the housing market. And when you look around, you know, we continue to see the economy add jobs. You read about layoffs, but then when you see these sort of first time claims, you know, they're not spiking up. And I think that people feel confident, you know, maybe if you do lose your job, you'll still be able to find a new one. And all of that just sort of drives people making decisions to purchase, which, you know, continues this strong economy that we've seen for so long now. You know, Lori, I, I'm coming back to what you and Dana were saying with, uh, is this really good news? And part of what's so confusing for folks right now is because what the Fed wants, uh, the Federal Reserve wants, right. is to cool down the economy. What most people want is an economy that's still robust, where they know right. that they have good jobs and uh, and will be making money. So how to reconcile all these things, I think, is, is, the, difficult, uh, is the difficult question right now. How will uh, the Federal Reserve react to all of these new indicators? It's such a difficult question, and you summarized it perfectly. Everyone wants to sort of, I think, you know, you, you want to be optimistic. You want to see a new set of economic data and say, hey, this is a good sign. You know, maybe we're not going to go into recession, or if we do, it won't be that bad. But then, to your point, every time there's sort of that good news, you have to think that the Federal Reserve looks at it as, hmm, this just keeps leading to this overheated market. Maybe this means we're going to have to raise interest rates more than we thought initially. Maybe we're going to have to keep them higher for longer. All of those which really make a much higher risk of recession, a really painful job market, you know, after the strong job market that we've had so much. And they've said as much, like very bluntly, very consistently, the job market's gonna have to cool, the economy's gonna have to cool. And you just get this tension that I feel like we see, you know, every day as news is released. What framework do you wanna use to digest that news? And it can change throughout the day as we've seen. All right, Lori, thank you very much. Happiest of holidays to you. Thank you. Happy holidays.